This is the twelfth video working with this Make Human Model in Blender. And in the last video, I said that I would try to explain how I was using these placeholder bones to help control um, the way that Blender disperses weights when it creates its vertex groups. And probably the best place to do that would be in weight painting mode. So I'll go into weight painting mode. Now, I'm not much on actually using weight painting. I don't find it to be a very productive process myself. But it is good for showing the way and having a look at the way that blender is assigning weights. And the best place to show the way these placeholder bones can manipulate the weight values is in the mouth. And in the mouth, we've placed a placeholder bone in the upper lip. And I think right away, just by selecting the jaw vertex group, that the presence of that bone is kind of showing itself. And what the bone does is prevents Blender from assigning weight to the upper lip when it creates the vertex group. And this kind of shows in the weight dispersion around the area of heaviest weight where the weight dispersion is obviously more gradual than in the area of the upper lip and the weight dispersion also follows around the mesh into a lighter weight onto onto the upper lip so it is actually assigned some weight here but that weight is very gradual and very small And if we were to look at that lip bone, we'd see something similar. Where it's assigned a heavy weight in the area of the head of the bone, just like on the chin. But a gradual weight around the mouth. And it's the interaction between these two values that cause the mouth to open in a, in a well, a reasonable mesh deformation for a mouth. Um, about the best way to really demonstrate uh, how the upper lip has affected the dispersion of the weight of the lower lip is probably to delete the upper lip. So I'm going to go into object mode and do just that. In wireframe, get my rigging up so I can edit it. Take the rigging into edit mode delete that upper lip bone, so I'll erase that. Select my model again, and I'll also need to delete the vertex group because it's already there and assigned. So I'll delete that vertex group, then reparent the rigging to the model. So I'll select the model, then the rigging in object mode. Control P Make parent to armature, create vertex groups from bone heat. Then select the model and go back into weight paint mode. And in weight paint mode, right away we see the reason why the eye vertex groups need to be deleted. But we'll just leave that alone to look at the jaw. Now looking at the jaw, it's actually assigned weights to the upper lip where it was a dark blue of having no weight before. Now it's a light green color, which would be a weight somewhere between zero and one quarter, or one quarter and one half. Either way, it's assigned considerable more heat or weight to that area, and the, grad <coughs> the graduation along the mouth has obviously changed, and even along the cheeks, that graduation has been altered quite a bit. So, this is the way that the placement of a bone can, that isn't intended for any animating purpose, can be used to control the way that Blender assigns weights. And, well, Blender has some interesting tools for weight painting, including a a grid work that we can overlay here 
to create a weight painting mask. But even with the presence of this mask, I find that weight painting is incredibly inaccurate and just a very imperfect process where it's, well, more or less right next to impossible to create the nice graduations of weight that Blender does. And it's these graduations of weight and their interactions that cause uh, favorable mesh deformation. And, well, that deformation is best shown in, in this mouth where this this type of a shape of a mouth when opening the jaw would be very difficult to achieve with weight painting. Uh, well, I guess one way to discover that would be to try. I know I did, and really, I couldn't come up with anything close to this, and I gave it a good honest effort. So, that's the way that, that these placeholder bones can affect the weight dispersions and be used to control the deformation of a model in different ways. And I've demonstrated the way under the arm. I think the way in the eyebrow is pretty clear. If I erase these and tried to move the head, the eyebrows wouldn't move because they wouldn't have any weight. All their weight is coming from this bone. And the reason for that in the eyebrows is they're a separate object, and I suppose we could take a moment to have a look at that in edit mode, where if I selected a vertices in the eyebrow, use control L to select linked, it would only select the eyebrow, and it would do that because the eyebrow is in fact a completely separate part from this mesh, it isn't joined to the mesh in any way. If I was to select any other vertices and grab it, it would pull the model with it. But the eyebrows don't because they're not really connected in that fashion. They're part of the same object and therefore part of the same mesh. But they're in no way linked with the rest of the model in that way. So that creates a need for these placeholder bones on, on that particular portion of the model. And other than that, the best way to get the hang of this type of bone is to experiment it. And I'm sure the similar types of bones can be used to create facial expressions and such. But my rigging skills haven't quite yet been developed to where, to where I'm creating face, face expressions. I did happen across a tutorial and uh, I'm going to go back and look at that sooner or later to see if I can can include a video on, on getting some basic facial expressions out of the model because that would be a pretty, pretty cool thing. And in the future videos, I'll be looking to get my model walking across a course and seeing if I can figure out the track 2 constraint for for animating a model in that way and that's another thing that information isn't that easy to come by on that process but I'll be looking for it and hopefully updating this series to include some information on that so until my next video I guess there's nothing left to say other than happy modeling